But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dream with open eyes to make it possible. This I did. As have I, Carmine de Stefano, the Bookman. And now we've come to it, the grand finale of Uncharted Month, with the last edition, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. How do we close the series out? Well, let's take a look at it together, shall we? Game opens! Drake and Sully meet a man named Talbot at a bar to exchange Drake's ring for currency. The deal falls through, however, when they learn the money is fake. This spurns on an all-out brawl. You get a real taste for the enhanced fighting controls before being attacked by this brute. After using your skills to beat him, the men are propped outside to meet. Hello, Victor. Kate? Still wallowing in the gutter with your protege, I see. This vindictive hag wants the one ring. When she gets it, cut her here. Give me that back. Cut her! Oh no, oh. Shut, Shut up. up. What the hey, hey, oh, they're dead already? Cut to Columbia 20 years earlier? Nate's just a kid trying to boost Drake's crap. That's when he meets Sully, who's looking for the same thing. Nate tails him until he comes across Sully hanging with Marlo. Afterwards, Sully meets Nate. Later that night, Nate sneaks back into the museum to take Drake's ring along with a special decoder. That's when he's personally introduced to... <laughs> Catherine! Who do you think you are, boy? You're nothing but a filthy, cast-off little beggar. You're not fit to touch these objects. What a sweet woman. I'd invite you over for torture one day. Nate escapes captivity till he's cornered. Then... <laughs> Sully and Nate begin working together. Great, since now they're dead. All right, lads? <laughs> oh. It was all a ruse to track down their hideout. The three meet with Chloe, who somehow has been programmed to be hotter than she was in the previous game, to locate Marlo. She finds out she's been duped, leaving the decoder for Nate. He discovers what all these clues point to. Way back when, Drake was sent out to find a magical city drowned in the sands of the vast Mideastern desert. He, along with his crew, have to search two places for other hints left behind some historical figures seeking the same thing. Nate with Sully head off to France to find the tomb of a Templar who was holding one half of an amulet. Outside, they are confronted by Talbot, who takes the piece. Then... Get it! Quickly! Get him up! Get him up! Get him up! Get him up! Spiders! A giant legion of spiders! They escape the vermin, then a burning building, only to realize Chloe and Cutter might be in some trouble. Onward to Syria, where they see Chloe and Cutter are not in some trouble. Cutter learned that Drake was part of a massive underground group working directly with the Queen of England. They control their subjects through fear. Charlie sees firsthand how they did it. Easy now. Look at me. Charlie, right here. Well, we gotta move now, okay? Just don't touch me. Get away from me. Right. Oh, great. This star turns people into a Bill Cosby routine. Will you stop touching me? Will you stop touching me? They push his drugged out ass forward until he turns on Nate. Right when he's ready to choke Nate to death, Charlie is stopped. They eventually come across the second tomb with the second amulet piece. However, outside... Shoot him. You son of a bitch. Cutter, pull the trigger. My pleasure. 
Run! They see Charlie's heroics are rewarded by being trapped by Talbot. What is this guy? Michael Myers? I shot him six times. This guy, this man, he's not human. Which then leads him to breaking his leg. So now he and Chloe are out for the remainder of the hunt. That's all right. Nate has a contact at his next destination. Elena Fisher, foreign correspondent. <laughs> hey, Sully. Come on already, guys. Your relationship is more inconsistent than Peter Parker's and Mary Jane's. Anywho, they are at Yemen, where the last part of the expansive puzzle lies. They locate a star map pointing out the celestial marking of the location of the Atlantis of the Sands. Afterwards... Do you hear that? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Wait, what is that? Get away from the walls. Hold on to that torch, kid. Spiders! A giant legion of spiders! Outside, the trio comes across warnings in English against seeking out the lost city. Elena tries to talk them out of the search. Later, Nate gets drugged, too. Ah, uh, great. Nate's got it, too. Will you stop touching me? This is a very strange, slow, bizarre, unnerving sequence. When Nate comes to, he's sitting with Talbot, Marlowe, and who the shorts is that? Well, Marlowe speaks deeply. I suspect I know you better than anyone, Mr. Drake. Of course, that's not your real name, is it? But we won't dwell on that. Oh, whoa, whoa, go back, go back. What the hell is that? What was Nate's real name? Dwell on it! Dwell on it! Since they have Sully, Nate is expendable. He escapes to chase down Talbot. He gets to him only to be knocked the fuck out. Later, he wakes up again in front of this pirate dude and his mateys. Arr! He threatens to kill Sully unless Nate cooperates. Nate fights back in this tripped out maze of ship parts. He seeks out the cruiser Sully should be held in. Braving through the elements, Nate learns it was all bullshit. Sully isn't there. Time to get off this funky ride and get washed ashore. Get out of here. Luckily, he's at Elena's hotel, who has a plan to save Sully. Nate and she relax in one of the most touching moments this series has produced. I like the way you think. I know. No, I... I mean, that's... I know what you mean. I'm sorry. I know. Time to save Sully! Elena helps Nate on the plane headed towards Sully's location. Nate's discovered, then he uses his guile to survive the massive plane crash in the middle of the extremely long, vast, impressively, insanely, magnificently, extraordinarily, mesmerizingly dry, barren, choking desert. After a long trek, Nate comes to an abandoned city. There he's attacked! He's saved by... English? What? Huh? English, I speak English. This is Salim, who helps Nate recover so they can stop Marlowe entering the Lost City. He claims King Solomon dropped a prison jar filled with evil demons at the bottom of the ocean to hold intact its evil. Okay, let's ride horses to save Salim. You locate him, then lose Salim in a sandstorm. Fortunately, Nate and Sully find the entrance to the Lost City. Inside, Nate grabs a drink only to witness. Well, that's a hell of a thing. What? No. Sully! No! Our old friend is killed by those bastards! This leads to the most frustratingly difficult portion of any game. Not only do these demons warp, harm you in close range, and take forever to kill, but they also throw fireballs that drop you nearly every time they decide to toss them. 
Get through with your teeth, voice, and controller in sufficiently working order, and you'll see Sully is still alive. In fact, Nate just had a horrid hallucination caused by the water. What's in the water source is a jar that can turn every water source into a pool of... With a psychotropic hallucinogen. They must stop Marlowe from controlling the world with it. So that's what they wanted. Which is why the Queen sent Drake to find it hundreds of years before. They do so, bringing about Marlowe's wrath. She is then caught in the collapsing sand. Despite Nate's efforts, she dies, causing Talbot's wrath. Now you have to escape this crumbling city while fending off an angry Talbot. After about 100 or so bullets, he finally keels over. Salim then rescues Nate and Sully before the city is swallowed whole. It's about time to go home. Before we leave... Well, I am not a perfect man. You're not proposing, are you, Sully? I mean, I love you, uh, but... Stop. Just stop being a wise ass for one second. That rings for Elena, who shares a tender moment with Nate that I hope finally keeps them together. Now, afterwards, you know about playing through it again for the treasures, so I won't repeat myself. And that's pretty much it. So what did I think of this game? I thought it was great. Great enough to want me to put my skull through a window. It adds so much more to the last formula. It really enhances the experience. There's more melee combat, more journal use, harder puzzles. You get hints instead of answers in this one, making you really have to use your head. I liked going back and seeing how Nate and Sully started off. It was good to see where their close relationship began. The story and enemies were good, but some things were left unexplained. Well, two things I can remember. What is Nate's real name? And how could Talbot survive so many shots from guns? Now this is most likely due to the recent release, but this game had more bugs in it than every PS3 game I've played combined. I'm sure they'll clear that up soon. I hope so. It ruins a really good experience. If I had to gauge the games by speeds, I'd say the first took us on a consistent 70 mile per hour ride. The second was 120 consistently. This ranged from 50 to 180, from pedestrian to holy shit! There are areas like the gin part that will absolutely piss you off. If you get through them quickly or without ire, consider yourself excellent or a fucking saint. Overall, it leaves quite an impression. It wraps up the series really nicely. But since this is seemingly the last entry of this series on the PS3, there's only one question I really have. Can't you make a fourth? Thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, and have a great day. And this one, can you have Elena and Nate get together and stay together? I mean, it's just kind of annoying that they just keep going on. Give me!